Well, the possibility is there, but uh, under these circumstances, I don't see I don't see that's happening. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, we the U.S. forces are in Iraq for uh, one reason, uh, which is uh, ISIS uh, to fight ISIS, <clears throat> and ISIS is still uh, in Iraq, in Iraq, and also in in uh, in Syria. We have to remember that ISIS pose a great danger uh, to Iraqi citizens. It did that in the last month when we when we saw uh, a bomb in Iran killing at least 90 people. Uh, so, uh, so ISIS is a grave danger in Iraq and in Syria in the rest, and in the rest of the Middle East. We still have uh, this uh, the whole camp in uh, in Syria that uh, that has around uh, fifty thousand uh, families of ISIS there. There are still ten thousand ISIS members in the jail in Syria. So we have to be uh, to make sure that ISIS is under control. If the United States withdraw from Iraq at this time, then uh, all we have is 900 soldiers in Syria. Uh, it's not enough to fight ISIS. <laughs> I think we are staying there uh, until ISIS is destroyed. And what the prime minister of Iraq is saying, I think, is for local consumption. I don't have knowledge about that, but it seems that the policy of the current administration of the Biden administration is that whenever they attack U.S. Uh, soldiers or bases in Iraq or in Syria, uh, then the U.S. will respond to that. Uh, I don't think there is a tendency to expand the war uh, beyond uh, these limits. And I don't see the scenario of 2003 is coming back uh, in Iraq. I don't think the American people uh, are interested in that, especially we have election this year. And uh, I don't think uh, President Biden would take actions like, like what George Bush, the son, did in 2003. Well, I could guarantee you if uh, uh, Trump was in the White House, nobody would attack, would attack America. Uh, Russia would not have attacked Ukraine. Uh, uh, the uh, Hamas would not have attacked Israel. And these militias in Iraq would not dare uh, attack the U.S. in Iraq or in Syria, nor does the Houthis in Yemen would attack uh, U.S. forces, because Donald Trump would not go after these uh, people. He would not go after these militias in Iraq or the Houthis in Yemen. He would go directly uh, to attack uh, Iranian interests. But before we, we consider any military action toward Iran, if Trump was the president, before we do any military action, we would consider uh, imposing sanctions on Iran, on Iran. Iran, during the time of Donald Trump, were not allowed to sell oil more than 400,000 barrels per day. When Biden came to the White House, he allowed Iran to increase its uh, sa sales of, of oil to three and a half million barrels per day. That would give Iran every week around one, uh, one, uh, around one and a half billion dollars every week. And so the first thing Donald Trump would have done is to cut the sales of the Iranian oil to any country in the world and go back to the old uh, sanctions against Iran. If that doesn't work, and if Iranian uh, agents in the Middle East uh, regardless of Hezbollah or the Houthis or the militias in, in Iraq, if they cause the death of one U.S. personnel, 
then Donald Trump would take actions against Iran directly, against personalities, high-ranking persons in Iran, and that would stop all the fighting. Well, Iraq is a victim of the Iranian hegemony. Uh, I don't blame the Iraqi government. I would blame Iran. Uh, Iran is the one who, uh, who is supplying money and uh, military equipment and training to these militias. Uh, therefore, Iran is responsible for, for what's happening in, in Iraq. And, and I think the U.S. government should take action against Iran. Uh, why go after uh, Iraqi uh, bases? If you could hit directly Iran, uh, hit it militarily or probably by, by increasing sanctions on Iran. So it doesn't help these militias. There is no need for any militia in Iraq. As long as there is Iraqi army well-trained with the with the U.S. equipment, mili military equipment, U.S. Uh, uh, fighter jets, etc., they don't need these militias. These militias are created by Iran, uh, uh, like what they did in Lebanon. They created Hezbollah, and now the Lebanese army does not function because Hezbollah is more powerful than the Lebanese army. So if the situation remains the same in Iraq, where Iran would uh, help these militias, maybe one day these militias would take over uh, Iraq, and that we don't want. Where we have to know that there is the aim of Iran in the Middle East is to have control all over the Middle East including the Arabian Gulf region. Iran, to do so, they have to get rid of the United States uh, military play, uh, in, in Iraq and in Syria. And so if the U.S. withdraws from Iraq or Syria, then I guarantee you Iran would take over all these states in the Middle East, including Jordan. And, and then after they take over the Middle East, they'll take over the oil of the Middle East. They would destroy the state of Israel. And so if that happens, it would happen with the help of China, Russia, and North Korea. These three states want to have the U.S. Army leave the Middle East and make Iran a powerful a country like China, like the U.S., like Russia, and dominate all over the Middle East. And that would include uh, Kurdistan and other places in the Middle East. This is the aim of Iran. Get rid of the U.S. military, military presence in Syria and Iraq. No, the U.S., I don't think at this time is uh, is going to leave the Middle East, especially with the war in uh, in Gaza. Uh, as you know, Israel is our strongest ally in the Middle East, and uh, and the U.S. is committed to preserve and protect the state of Israel from any aggression. Iran would love to see the U.S. leave the Middle East, so that it could it could pose more danger to Israel. Uh, to the existence of Israel, and the United States is not going to allow that to happen.